Geeky Seekers, I'm Nick. Third gen Threadripper is finally here and I decided I wanted to focus on the 3960X for launch because we didn't actually get much time to make this video. And I feel like the 3960X might be the chip that a majority of people who actually need that much processing power will actually choose. And if you weren't thinking about this chip and you're in the market for an AGDT system, spoiler alert, uh, yeah, this video might actually change your mind. We decided that instead of doing gaming benchmarks at 720p to see how many frames a CPU can push, that we wouldn't do any gaming benchmarks at all. We only bench the CPU with CPU only workloads in both Linux and Windows because that's really what these chips are designed for. The AMD Ryzen Threadripper 3960X is a 24 core, 48 thread CPU with a base clock of 3.8 gigahertz that boosts up to around 4.5 gigahertz. It's designed on TSMC's new seven nanometer FinFET process and features PCIe Gen 4. At the time of filming, the 3960X is going on sale at the recommended retail price of 1,399 US dollars, which is approximately around 2,000 thousand Australian dollars. And before we start, there are a few caveats with this video. We're only looking at the 24 core 3960X in this video because that's the only third gen Threadripper chip we currently have. And make sure you watch till the end because chances are I'm going to answer something that you're going to comment about anyway. So yeah, just hold the comments to the end. Now we compared it with as many chips as we had access to in the short amount of time we actually had to make this video because we've only had the chip for about 24 hours. And everything we tested was running with PBO enabled, all XMP profiles enabled, as well as testing with NUMA and setting core affinity. There was no overclocking and everything you're about to see is out of the box results. And there's a really good reason for it. Most Threadripper users will not overclock. We focused on comparing it to the previous second generation 2970WX and we ran the test on two test benches to get all of the work done. All right, let's talk about how we ran the testing and then jump into some actual benchmarks. The 3960X test bench is running on the Gigabyte TRX40 Aorus Master with 32 gigs of Thermaltake Tough RAM at 3600 megahertz. The CPU was cooled by the Deep Cool Castle 360EX as it's rated at the 200 180 watt TDP that the 3960X is also rated at. The 2970WX is running on the ASRock X399 Professional Gaming with 64 gigs of Corsair LPX at 3600 MHz, also cooled by the Deepcool Castle EX360. Both motherboards are running the latest BIOS versions as provided by both Gigabyte and ASRock. We ran both Windows and Linux CPU only based benchmarks to see how the 3960X performed. So with all that said, let's start off with what everyone wants to know, how it did with Centerbench. We tested both R15 and R20, and we've got some historical data with R15 and R20 we've collected. So yeah, let's kick it off with R20. All these chips are chips that we have on hand and we only tested multi-threaded performance since that's what these Threadripper chips are designed for. They're designed for ripping thread. So yeah, let's see what happened. From our testing in Cinebench R20, it's immediately clear that the 3960X is around 41% faster than the 2970WX in the same workloads. Now, these these were the first tests that we ran with the 3960X and honestly, I, I couldn't believe the results were as high as they were. So I ran the tests around 50 times on each CPU just to make sure. And yeah, uh, it was the same every single time. So with that said, let's move on to Cinebench R15. Similar results are echoed with R15 as well. The 3960X scores around 36% higher than the 2970WX. Okay, let's move on to some Blender benchmarks. We ran the Blender BMW scene and the classroom scene on both Windows and Linux. Our Linux configuration was running Ubuntu 18.04.3 with kernel version 5.3.13 and it's quite similar to our Linux GPU testing configuration. So let's start off with the Windows benchmarks. The lower number is for the better result. Yeah. 
In Windows, the 3960X was around 43% faster than the 2970WX in the BMW scene and around 42% faster in the classroom scene. So with that said, let's change lanes and see how the Linux Blender benchmarks went. In Linux with the BMW scene, the 3960X was around 28% faster than the 2970WX and around 31% faster in the classroom scene. The, the difference between Windows and Linux is actually what really surprised me though. The 3960X is around 12% faster in Linux with the BMW scene and around 20% faster in the classroom scene. So if we compare this is just like a, a, a crazy idea though. If we compare the Linux 3960X result with the Windows 2970WX result, uh, the BMW scene is around 55% faster. And if we compare the classroom scene, it's like 61% faster. So yeah, uh, looks like if I ever need to use Blender, I'm gonna be using Linux. All right, we're on to our last batch of tests. We did a timed Linux kernel compile benchmark. Now this benchmark compiles a Linux kernel version of your choice, and I decided to select 5.4 release candidate three. The benchmark runs three times and calculates the average compile time between those three runs. The lower the score, the better the result. So yeah, let's see what happened. The 3960X averaged around 30 seconds to compile the kernel, whereas the 2970WX averaged around 44 seconds, making the 3960X around 38% faster. It's, um, it's, it's impressive how, how much they've changed between these generations. The Threadripper 3960X is looking like a decent addition to the Threadripper lineup. What I mean by that is, AMD isn't actually ditching X399 or 2nd Gen Threadripper. They're still going to be manufacturing 2nd Gen Threadripper alongside 3rd Gen for the foreseeable future. And I'm going to level with you guys as well. I would love to have compared this chip to the 9980XE or the 10980XE or any other Intel AGDT chips, but yeah, we physically have no Intel AGDT hardware. We do get motherboards to like borrow from vendors just to like try out and stuff, but yeah, we don't get to keep anything. So it's very hard for us to compare Intel stuff. We do have some Broadwell E stuff, but I don't think that's really a fair comparison given how old Broadwell E is now. Also, I would love to have done way more testing before launch, but yeah, we had one day to basically prep everything, to stage everything, run all the tests, film, and to edit this video. And that is a lot of work for just two people. Okay, let's get back on track. In regards to the pricing of motherboards and CPUs for third gen Threadripper, I've addressed this to death in the past. It's not cheap, but based on these results, I think you're getting what you pay for. And I think these benchmarks really do back that up. So then, should you upgrade to third gen Threadripper if you already have a first or second gen setup? Well, put it this way. If you've got the 2970WX, probably not, right? Because it's, it's close, but also it's not really justified in the price. But if you have a 1950X like I do and you need the cores, my controversial opinion is gonna say yes. And if you look at the difference between multi-threaded workloads between the two chips, uh, the difference is absolutely bonkers. If you rewind and look at the Cinebench R20 results, uh, you can tell me if it's gonna be worth it because the 3960X is around 71% faster. And that for me, for someone who spends so much time editing and rendering, is worth every single second and every single penny. I wanna finish this video up by really driving home that these platforms are designed primarily for use cases like content creation and software development. TRX40 and X299 and Threadripper and Intel Core X CPUs, they're just not for everyone. And that's actually the point of them. They're for those people who really need it. And if you really need it, I think the Threadripper 3960X is a solid choice if you have to spend money, but you don't wanna to spend too much money. It's the balance between price and performance for what I'm calling the new ultra high-end desktop market.
The AMD Ryzen Threadripper launched worldwide at the time of this video releasing and should be available for $1,399 US dollars. And I'll add links to all of that stuff in the description when the chips become available. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you didn't like this video, you know what to do and tell us how you hated about it. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak, we seek. And to all the Linux people out there, You've been so kind to us with all the Linux stuff we've started doing. We really, really appreciate it. We're gonna look after you from now on in the future. You guys are the best. Thanks for watching.